My name is Tyler, and uh, over the years, I've definitely had a bunch of different film emulations and plugins and DCTLs that I've used, and some I've been happy with, and some I have been not. Now, I'm just going to go over really quickly um, what film emulation I use and what DCTLs I use and give you a basic rundown of my magic little tricks and how I think this film emulation is by far the best and also, in a way, the simplest and accurate. And then the DCTLs help create more of that film look through density and correcting the skin. And yeah, let's get into it. Okay. So we're going to, have to be taking a look at this image right here. And I have a handful of clips. And I'm going to be using a power grade that I typically use. I'm going to run over that. But we'll start off with this. I have my power grade on there, and I'll turn this off. This is just reducing the highlights. But right here, you can see is what I'm using, and that is Filmbox. Now, Filmbox is set up pretty great. You have options of negative only, print only, halation and grain only, and full. Full is if you just want to work in a single node. Negative only and print only is basically like saying, I want to put a node on, and then at the end, I want to put the print on and grade in between there. So that's what I have set up right now. And we have camera, so you can enable camera, and you can control the exposure right here. And then we have temperature. You can control the temperature back and forth. And let's do a little full screen on this. So I'll do a little Shift F and then Z to full screen it. So basically, we can work with a full screen and have these effects going. So, brightening the exposure, changing the tint right here. So maybe I like something like that. Maybe I bring the temperature up just a little bit. And then next, we have the option to choose your negative um, color. Basically, when it's on 35 millimeter full frame, it won't let you change this, but you can go to advanced settings and go to color and tone and change it right here to, you know, 500T, 200T, and 50D and 250D. So right now we have 250D, and there's gamut compression option. I don't really mess around with that too much. And then we have halation. So halation is pretty subtle um, on this. You can kind of notice in the actual more highlighted areas, how it's working, and what kind of strength you want, and the sharpness level, that kind of thing. And then you can go to the saturation, and you can saturate it and all that good stuff, and change the reds around and all that. Next is the grain. So when we put the grain on, we can kind of strengthen up the grain, and kind of zoom out on the image, and you can see the grain right here. Grain is pretty accurate, and I think it's actually from a film scan. So you can, you know, soften up the grain, um, change the strength to, you know, something a little bit more minimal. Um, you can change the saturation of the grain itself. You can de-squeeze it anamorphic. Um, I like this grain a lot. And then we have uh, dust. You can change it from very light, like typical, heavy, very heavy, right? So we can see that dust right there and see that playing through. Kind of get that look. I don't mess around with dust too much. It's a very specific look. Uh, gate weave, you can change the gate weave, and basically that is kind of doing that kind of shaky film look because film is always moving, and you can adjust it and minimize it and all that kind of stuff. So let's table that. This is a cool thing. At the bottom, there's vibrance, contrast, and pull, push and pull process like film. Um, the contrast looks very nice. It works very well. This image is already pretty contrasting, so I'm not really gonna mess around with that. Vibrance is just kind of adding that saturation on there in a more subtle way. 
And then push and pull process kind of pushes and pulls the film. And you're getting a very accurate representation of pushing and pulling film. All right, so let's just knock all those back. And now split toning, I like using this very subtly. So I might, you know, push it up to 0.101 and change it around a little to get that split tone. But you can obviously go crazy with it and move around and be wild and nuts with it. And maybe back up the intensity, do something like that. And then that is the basic rundown of film box. But whenever we go back out here, we can take a look at the print itself and we can change it from full standard extended. Um, a lot of times I do the extended, but here's the standard, right? So we shift F again, take a look at this. Here is the full, right? Here's standard, and here is extended. Now, extended is going to work more like how your footage actually looks like, but it's going to be bringing that film look to it. So the colors are going to be a little bit more accurate to what your camera looks like, and it gives you more wiggle room to add contrast and stuff like that. So next thing I want to go over. So, yeah, I can just simply copy and paste that on there, apply grade, All right? And then we have this image right here, right? And we can obviously change the exposure down a little bit, you know, and bring that back down to a normal place. But the cool stuff I want to talk about is mononodes.com. Now they work with density, color, it's a guy from Germany who makes these DCTLs and they're a little pricey, but they work fantastically. So let's take a look again. We'll put this on here and I'm going to switch it over to extended. And we'll take this off and we'll first take a look. Let's take that off. So let's first take a look at density. Now density is basically pulling the color from the light and getting a denser, richer color. So if I pull the reds, reds are getting more dense. And do global density, densifies everything. Densifies, it's a good word. Okay. And you can do all sorts of stuff. The deep slider is for the highlights. So basically, if you don't want the highlights affected, you can push this back and forth in global blended, obviously. And then next we have brightness. You can change the brightness with mono nodes and then split split as I use this a lot. So this is basically splitting the high mids and lows, however you want to, you can stagger them or whatever, but yeah, you can push it like that. You can change the slope of what a black set's affecting. You can just bring it all back. You can do all the mids. And mids has a really nice, almost like contrast look to it also. And you can look back up the blacks and you can stagger these if you want to and kind of make a specific look. You know, it all just depends on your mood and what you are going for, but this, saves a lot of time because there's a lot more difficult ways to do this in DaVinci Resolve itself, right? So changing the highs, maybe create some kind of crazy look. Okay, so we'll just bring that back. Now, the other thing that's really cool, there's hue shift. So this can like, you know, shift all your hues around in here, red to magenta, uh, red to yellow, you know, yellow to red, all the good stuff. And cyan to blue, blue to cyan, all that. And then saturation is a great gradual saturation. And then if you want to desaturate, you can, you know, desaturate anything that you want to. And 
the last thing I want to show you before I go is correcting skin tones. Now this is pretty cool. So I kind of combined some techniques I learned from YouTube, but I put this DCTL on here as the effects and I go down to balance, right? And whenever I go to balance, this is a utilities uh, DCTL from mononodes.com. And whenever we take a look at this, we want our skin tone to be yellow. So basically any person that is, that is detected, it shows the skin and we want it to be yellow, right? So I might make some minor corrections, maybe with the tint, changing the tint around a little bit, maybe bringing up the temperature a little bit, I can change that, right? But here's another cool thing. What I like to do is I'll press Shift S to create a node before the utilities. And whenever I put this on here, I basically wanna, I'll turn that off and I'll do the highlight region you could press shift h also and i go to the corrector and i draw over my skin and i find my skin right and then i'm gonna basically bring this slider down right to the point where it starts affecting things and then i may change the luminance level a little bit and then i kind of widen that on the luminance and maybe a touch and then i'll denoise it and then I'll see clean packs, clean whites. Alrighty, now that look is pretty good. You don't have to be perfect with this, with what I'm doing. So now I'm gonna press Shift H again, turn that off, and now that region is just selected, right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under my effects and I'm gonna go to color compressor. And I'm gonna put this on here. When I go to color compressor, what this does is compress any color that you select. Right? So what makes this utility is pretty nice is you can see the selection, right? We want to be yellow. Uh, green would be shifting towards the green side of the skin. This magenta color would be shifting magenta side of the skin. So the, technically the skin is on point, but yellow is where you want to be fully, right? So what I do is I'll just press this little drawer. I'll go over my skin and I'll find what I like. So 255, 255 is what I like. I click that, and when I click that, it pops up that color, I compress that hue. So watch this. When I compress that, my skin starts turning yellow. Or that's my brother, sorry. My skin starts turning more in the yellow. Now you can go way too much on it, but I kinda wanna get to the point where my skin, my lips are still a little bit magenta. And now we can turn this utility off. We take a look at the skin, and now, Sorry, this is before, I mean, this is after, that's before, after, before. Notice in the skin right here, that's off, that's on, off, on. Subtle little shift, right? And now I can go back, take a look, and see how my skin looks, and maybe I want to add saturation, go to my vector scope, look at it, see where the saturation line is, and then I might do like a, a global saturation. So I'll go over here to my sat node, I'll do a global saturation on that. And that looks great. And then I might add some diffusion. So Filmbox also makes a diffusion, um, digital diffusion filter that is the best in the world. And you take a look at that too, called Scatter. When I turn that on, and you come to the list of all of the diffusions you can use. I like using Hollywood Black Magic, maybe at one. So I'll take a look at this. And we turn this off. Before. After. Before. After. Diffuses. Beautifully and nicely. And if that's not enough, uh, what I like to do is I will do a node right here, right after scatter. And I will go into my gamma, go to linear, and then I will go to mid details. And I will turn the mid details down like maybe 60, right? So if we take a look at that again, 
and then we turn it off, turn it on. We're getting a nice, soft look. And obviously, if you don't want to do it over the whole thing, you can just do a power window over his head. But that's pretty much it. Um, the very last thing I want to talk about is the cool thing about Filmbox is that you can select a, any color space you want to from any camera, pretty much. And if you're in DaVinci Wide Gamma, they have DaVinci Wide Gamma, they have Asus CCT. You can be outputting in HDR. It's the world is your oyster. It's amazing. So I recommend mononodes.com, uh, Color Shift DCTLs, Utility DCTLs, Hue Twist, Split Toning, and then videovillage.com. I recommend Filmbox and Scatter. And I know Filmbox has a light, like a light version, like free. And then I know um, mononodes.com also has a utility DCTL, so don't forget that. But that's it for today. Have a good one.